In this video, we're going to look at chapter 8, section E.1 on measuring the center. Let's say we have a data set which we'll represent with this line here. The end of the line, this end of the line represents the minimum, and this end represents the maximum. Now this is called the spread of the data, which we'll go into in more detail in a later video. But sometimes it's really helpful to try to find the center of the data set. If we know the center and the minimum and maximum or the spread, we know a lot about the data set. And there are three ways that we can measure the center of a data set. And those are the mean, median, and mode. The first measure of the center is the mean of a data set. And this is really the arithmetic average. We represent the mean of a data set with this symbol we call x bar. And there's a, an equation that we can use, and that is the sum of all x divided by the number of data points in the set. So again, this symbol up here is a sigma, and so sigma x is the sum of the data values. The mean of a data set is one single value in the center of the data, but it doesn't necessarily have to be one of the data values. For instance, if one of the if the average score on one of my math tests, which was a 75%, we know that there are several students that scored above a 75% and we know that several students scored below. But 75% does not necessarily have to be one of the exact data values in the set. The median, however, is the middle value of an ordered data set. It's very important that we order the data set before calculating the median and we've already practiced this. We know several ways to order the data set. We can use a stem and leaf plot. We can use a dot plot. Or we can simply list all of the data values in order if there aren't too many of them. In this example, this last example, I have five data values. The middle number is the median. Now in an odd numbered data set, or a data set that has an odd number of values, it's quite easy to find the middle data point. We take the number of data values, we add one, and we divide by two. And that gives us our middle data value, which we can then read from any of our ordered data sets. So in this example, I have five values. I add 1 to get 6 and divide by 2, so I want the third data value in the ordered set, which is 3. For an even-numbered data set, we can use the same equation, but in this case, we'll get a number with a 0.5. And so what we're going to have to do is take the average between the two middle data values to get the median. And I'll go over an example of that later on in the video. The mode we've seen already. And this is really easy to determine from graphs, but the mode is the most frequently occurring value in a data set. So if we have a column graph, looks something like this. Remember we have the frequencies on the y-axis, and here are our data values. We know that the mode is the most frequently occurring data value, or the tallest column. And in this case it's again 3. Now sometimes we might run into a situation where we have two columns 
that have the same height and they're both the tallest column in the graph. In other words, I have two modes. So in this case, two and three both occur the same number of times and they both occur more than the other data values. This is okay and we call this a bimodal set, which means that it has two modes. You can have a bimodal set, but you can't have any number of modes over two. So I can't have a trimodal set. I can't have three modes or four modes. I can only have two. If I have three data values that, have, that all occur the same number of times, and it's the greatest number of times, then I just don't have a mode. I can't use the mode as a measure of the center. Let's take a look at an example problem. Here we have a number of small airplanes that fly into a remote airstrip over a 15 day period. And the, the data values are represented here. And for this data set we're asked to find the mean, the median, and the mode. Let's start with the mean. And remember, mean we represent with x bar, and it's the sum, sigma x means the sum of all the data values, divided by n, which is the number of data values. Well, if I take all of these numbers and I add them up, I get 66. And n is simply the number of data values, which we know is 15. And if I do that out, I get 4.4 as the mean number of airplanes flying into the airstrip on any given day. So that's one measure of center. The next measure of center is the median. And in order to find the median, I need to order the data set, which means I'm going to take all of these values and I'm going to put them in order from least to greatest. And this is the ordered data set. So I have 15 data, set, data values remember I want to find the middle data value so I add 1 to 15 and divide by 2 well that's going to be 8 so I need the 8th data value so I'm going to count in 8 values from the left so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so 4 is the 8th data value and that is my median and I can check that because I know this is an odd number data set and I should have the same, no same number of data values on either side, which I do. I have seven over here and seven over here. So the median for this data set is four. The last measure of center, the mode, is quite easy to find once I have an ordered data set because it's the value that occurs the most often. Well, by inspection, I can see that I have three fours and no other data value occurs three times. So the mode in this case is also four. We can see that in this case all three measures of center are relatively co close to each other which could mean that this data set is symmetric but we'd have to graph to make sure. Sometimes the measures of center aren't so close so we need to evaluate if one is more appropriate to use than the other. Let's take a look at another example. I'm asked to find x if 10, 7, 3, 6, and x have a mean of 8. Well, remember that the mean is the sum of all the data values. Divided by the number of data values, which is 5. In this case, that equals 8. With a little simplification, we see that we have 26 plus x over 5 equals 8. So 26 plus x equals 40. So if we subtract 26 from both sides, x is 14.